And we're back. We're back. Welcome to the Flow Show. Take two. Take Sarah two. Sarah Felicia here, and we have Tim Glover looking at you. And today we are going to talk about managing transitions. Which was actually good for a second take. It was. It is. <laughs> See how it worked? Uh, so stay tuned for a great talk. The mic. Hello, and welcome. Before we get to it, let's have the intro. The intro, the excuse the for Tim to actually play the guitar. Yes, Let us know in the comments. Just as equally impressive in theater. <laughs> Segovia our first, at his best. Our first show that had no audio in the beginning. So. Yeah, so maybe if we can just get a confirmation that there's audio. Uh, yeah, it looks like Rome. Can you let us know? Rome is here. He said, I'm so glad that you made it today. I'm glad you made it as well. Today, yes, audio is good. good. Audio is good. Perfect. So we're good to go. We're going to talk about managing transitions. We were discussing how the change of season is upon us, fall is upon us. So honestly. managing transitions is about, it's different than change. So, so managing change tends to actually be something that's uh, involved with doing and managing transitions about being. And that led me immediately to have the picture of the, the tree in the background and I had to actually reflect, which uh, in the last version, take one, and I'm, I'm inclined to reflect again on take two, that this, time of year is just for me the best time of year by far. I so look forward to the autumn and being, uh, being an artist, being a painter as well, I love slapping on the big yellows and the big reds and the big white of rocks or, or, or pine trees um, or, or birch trees. Or and, moons. Or moons. Ro room saying it's a full moon tonight. It's a full moon Ooh. tonight. Ooh. So yes, I can get out there at night. It actually is more black and whites. Yeah. But uh, yes, so I love this time of year. Um, and it does fill me up with uh, always, I think autumn is, is referred to as the harvest time in the year. Yeah. And it, and it always fills me up with, with excitement, as does, does spring, winter is the time where we actually kind of go into that more of a dormant self-reflective. But autumn is the time where it's out there ripping, roaring, and everything is so gorgeous. And on the I way... Was, I was, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just I was going to add on the way in, because I drive from Waterdown, which is about an hour away from where uh, the studio is, it is in Toronto. In Toronto. And there was this amazingly orange tree. And I am always reminded, and every year I take pictures to remind myself that these colors are so super saturated colors. Fantastic. It's it's just not, It's even when I put it on the canvas, I always find myself questioning whether reality is even close to how vivid some of the, the, uh, the colors show up on canvas. And it's this time of year always, I take a whole pile of pictures to remind myself that, yeah, Life is very, very vivid. This is the transition from, um, from summer to winter, that managing transitions is what we thought we'd talk about. Now, you wanted to actually comment or say something. I else. was just going to say, I, was, I also love this time of year as well. And I, I have been doing a sunrise ritual almost every day. I can get out there because I just love the colors of a sunrise or a sunset are also sometimes so unreal to see. Today, there was pinks and purples and oranges and just, it was lovely. Uh, but yeah, we, you came in today just talking about this book, Managing Change versus Managing Transitions. And we're getting ready to go to market with mechanics of being. And we've been talking about, you know, very philosophical sometimes, um, but it's very much a practical way we feel it, that is is a key way to live in this big transition that we're all experiencing to some degree or another that is life and that is business during this pandemic time. yeah and so what does it mean managing change what's the difference between managing change versus managing transition well i'll start with a story so i was with my uh, nephew last night and he is a uh, singer songwriter 27 years old i think uh, you know, give or take I'm, I'm sure for them it actually matters, but for me, I'm, I always muck it up. Um, so singer-songwriter, not allowed to sing. 
because you can't actually sing outside right now. So in the 27, he'd actually, he's, he writes his own material. And then he had some challenges just even performing because it's, it was starting to uh, impact him from a health perspective. So he's in the process of a pivot and, and he was already in a pivot and then put the pandemic in there with a pivot. And it seems to me that the idea and the use of the word pivot, we did a, a series and we've been talking about the big pivot on the horizon before the pandemic hit. And as the pandemic hit, it was hard to actually figure out, okay, well, we've been talking about this. This is, this is, this is the big pivot. And recognizing you know, a little bit later on that the big pivot is foremost a psychological shift before it is you can actually but you have to have, have to psychologically shift that's called transition so as the the writer and i can't remember the, the book because it's an old book he says change is not what's the difficulty it's the transition that'll kill you and the transition is the psychological the inner shift transition. the inner transition you have to go through and the interesting thing with change the very first thing that people do when a big trauma happens is they actually stop and they contract. They go, geez, I'm not sure really what to do. And in a business context, usually they, they cut their, their budgets. They cut any expenses that they deem are non, uh, non-important. And usually those are the ones that are the most important because they're actually playing to an intangible and trying to make the transition a lot easier. And we've been educated so much on that front that people just do it automatically even when you talk to them about it they go so why are you doing it that way and why are you why are you actually being so contracted and my my nephew reminded me yesterday that he's in a space where he's realized he's been contracted and he looks around and he says yes it's i'm also out there doing outreach and talking to people and he's shifting his focus from more music and he's got a background in photography and on the job um, film support uh, in pre-production. And so he's really excited about actually using a lot of the, the concepts that he's hearing on podcasts and hearing from us around how to manage the inner state as you make this transition, because it can be some mildly fearful, fear inducing to wildly fear inducing. And everyone on the planet is actually going through that right now. And I don't, and I haven't seen any articles or any comments on the fact that it's the inner change that is the most important one. Because we as human beings, we've been focused on humans' doings. Mm -hmm. All for, like, not just this generation, but generation after generation after generation after generation. And it, and it's so cool to be hanging with... with uh, I was in millennials, Sarah, um, everybody, and anybody of that age group, because in my age group, they're just headed to the exit for the most part. Mm -hmm. They're looking to get the heck out of Dodge. So their focus is on managing the change. Whereas the millennials, and I think the ones behind them as well, are actually focused on, I'm going to actually start to manage my inner state and start to find joy in the craziness that's happening with the autumn colors. And so it's possible to always find joy is really the part of my takeaway is it's but it's it's very much what you focus on you actually are able to attract mm -hmm. that speaks to why i started doing the my sunrise right. ritual because i was going through so rome was just saying uh change is good and he's how old like, is tim uh, i'm 62. how old is tim tim is 62. <laughs> yeah 60 62. so for me, I, I mean, so the way that, I, that you explain the change versus transition, because yes, change is always happening. It's just the nature of life and the nature shows us this, the falling leaves and whatnot. Um, but I recently have adopted this new, like this new understanding about setting goals versus setting an intention. So yeah, I was, was using this example yeah. of when we have a goal, let's say I want to make a million dollars or, you know, I want to go live here. That's managing a, ch a change. And you start to see your bank account change. You see the way you spend your money. It's very all, tangible. It's, out, it's here. all out there changing. But if nothing has changed inside, you'll still feel, you'll still feel how you felt before thinking that the million dollars was going to manage the transition inside that you needed to have. So for me, just a while back, I decided, and this uh, followed suit with uh, our our buddy that we really are inspired by, Michael Singer, who wrote The Untender Soul. Mickey. 
Michael Singer, Mickey, we call him Mickey, or uh, the surrender experiment. And he has the same idea where he, he focuses on the inner with the intention that I want to feel inner content. I love that. I want to feel yeah. free inside. I want to feel That's my intention. joy inside. And so I made that change for myself where I stopped setting goals because I could see that I, you know, just didn't, I'm not, hadn't been on the planet as long as you, but create goals and I achieved those goals. But I constantly felt like I was doing to achieve these goals that were out there in the future. And turns out what I thought that I wanted wasn't actually what I wanted. And all that doing, I ended up getting really stressed out and overwhelmed. And I actually ended up creating a life that wasn't fully authentic for me. And so I've been in this kind of dark night of the soul. Some people refer to that or um, really it's, it's an identity crisis that at some point or another, we all go through versions of this. And so focusing on putting myself first, putting my inner needs first and sunrise and colors are something that really gave me that inner joy. And so when we talk about the mechanics of being, it's putting first and foremost, what is that inner state you want to cultivate for yourself yeah. and staying present to listen to the cues that are are being given to you basically in order to do that and so yeah change is necessary but first it's like what is that inner transition maybe that you need to look and reflect upon and say hey like is my outer world reflecting that what's going on inside, inside? yes Rome says yes intentions uh, oh and he's Rome's you're 10 years older than Rome way to go <laughs> so I so again I'm reminded of the, the conversation I had with my nephew last night and the idea of the inner and the outer so the inner world and the outer world we've been schooled in the outer world like crazy but as a as a creative so I've been a creative my whole life I, uh, you know, without going into the, the details but I went to to Europe and toured when I was relatively young um, so I think it was about 18 years old um, and then toured about and my, my deal was to come back and I was then going to go down to uh, Nashville and uh, for, for various reasons decided not to do that. Um, but the point at that, at that time is the point that I was talking to my nephew about was as a creative person, a creative in any way, shape or form. If you're a coder, you're creative. If you're someone who actually gets up in the morning and actually goes through the process of wanting to, to make yourself a nice cup of tea or whatever, that's a crater. If in fact you actually like to decorate your room, that's a crater. You have to start to understand where this is going. Every one of us creates. And the interesting thing with someone who actually is creative for a living is they start to recognize at the beginning that they have to work their craft. So they have to get a framework and a structure to be able to work their craft. But if very, very quickly after you've done your first project or second or third, you start to realize, I'm not really creating. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a vessel through which information and energy flows. And if I happen to pay attention to my inner world, I can actually start to, to make a picture of a tree blowing in the wind. Or I can actually write a song. Or I can actually go and put a business proposal together. Or I can code for this new software that's going to allow you know blind people to see. Or whatever the case may be. But it's all creative. But we have not been schooled, for the most part, in the art of being. We've had actually been schooled in the mechanics of doing. And the mechanics associated with being are something that I believe everyone is starving for. And where I see the most pickup on any social media feed is with your generation and the younger generation. Even. Because I think Rome was saying he's got a, a brother who's, who's is a bit younger yes. as well. Yeah, we're going to reach out to your brother. Yeah, and, and so they get it. Say, so you know what? I'm looking at my mom and dad, and here we are again. So we had 2000, the, the tech bubble, 2008, the freaking crash, and mom and dad are going, oh, my gosh, I'm not sure we're going to be able to keep our house. Here we are, 2020, we're all, like, we have so many people freaking out whether they're going to be able to keep their house or keep keep anything. And the, the point being is, is life really all about keeping stuff out there the way it was? Or is life about a journey that starts inside? And to manage the transition inside is where it's at. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it doesn't. Managing transitions starts with letting go. It starts with letting go of expectations, letting go of old beliefs, old interpretations, old perceptions. 
the biggest one being that we can control our environment. Got to let go of that baby because if you actually spend any time inside for a second and just start to watch what's going on, we don't control a heck of a lot. We can respond to it and we can be in charge of a response, but we really don't control it. And managing transitions is about learning to, you know, Nikki's point, Mickey, Mickey, he hasn't given me a phone call yet. I called him Mickey now three times on the show. Singer. Michael the surrender Singer. experiment. Hit surrender. Like just allow yourself to be guided. Yeah. Because you're not creating this stuff anyway. You're just actually a conduit for it. And you got a whole team mm -hmm. helping you in creative endeavors. And we've been taught to ha, ha, doesn't exist. We're going to keep it separate. Not for me. One of my mentors referred to her, you know, finding uh, she worked with, with color and created this beautiful system. And she, you know, when I asked her what, you know, why do you do this? And she just said, I'm just the straw. You know, I'm just the straw. Like, what if we are just, yeah. we, what if we are that? that canvas that the, the universe holy universe is is just you know using us to to create with and we are in co-creation and dancing with you know the universe and when we stay expansive to, to use your earlier uh story with your nephew when we stay expansive in other words when we allow ourselves to experience higher frequency emotions like joy yeah. that's really coming from within you know, when we're we're in that being state of these emotions that are of higher frequency, then we're creating with the universe in those states of being. So, you know, the, that old adage, what we focus on grows, what we focus on expands. If we stay in the fear and yeah, we're, the lower we're frequency. in the lower frequency, we'll, we'll, we'll still be creating with the universe, we'll still be dancing with the universe, but we'll continue to create things that, that will give us more fear, right? So, yeah. Um, and I think this is something that our generation uh, really, really speaks to our generation because we were able to see the contrast of our, like the parents' generation and just the way society, like I've, I've been someone who, who's been researching and following just the different ways that I've seen society and our systems not necessarily operating for our our health and the greatest, greatest good for who would, creatives as we all are. Yeah, not honoring, not honoring, not honoring that aspect that we as human beings right. have actually been reduced to humans doing. Yeah. So I the agree. mechanics of doing is what's been driving us, and we, you know, we, we claw our way to the top of the pyramid, do, doing, 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 and and then we get up there, and if, and in my generation, you get up to that top, and you start to realize, you know what, I don't think this is really the right place for me. Yeah, I remember I had a friend who owned a, he was very young, younger than me, and he created this hedge fund with millions of dollars at such a young age, and thinking that that was what was going to make him happy, having unlimited yeah. funds, and he just went into a spin in his own dark night, just to realize, like, I have all of this, but there's something so missing here, and... Uh, what is so Rome saying? Then expectations are hard to deal with the younger generations. What do you What do you mean by that, Rome? Um, but I, I mean, I think because there is so much a different education out there now because of YouTube and all these podcasts and people sort of speaking yeah. about these, you know, the importance of knowing thyself and self development. Yeah, and and again, it was a great conversation with my nephew last night. He started to realize that the, the podcast he was listening to was talking about things like meditation or, or uh, mindfulness. And the way he played it back to me, and it was in, in a question format, he said, well, the way I'm kind of understanding the purpose of meditation or mindfulness was to prepare for death. And I thought, you know what? That actually, there's, there's a lot of wisdom in that. From my own benefit, I tend to actually, I focus on the, the navigation, which I'm navigating constant transition or constant pivots. Because being present, being really present allows you to engage with all the resources and start to actually get a, a mental uh, perspective and also start to define who you are relative to this big dance. I'm just, I'm, you know, I am, I'm part of this dance. And once I can actually get a, a handle on that, I'm now in a jazz trio or I'm in a jazz quartet where I will actually play something, they play something. They pick up a beat. We actually change a syncopated rhythm to from one beat to the next, and we're all kind of moving like the weather. No one's, no one person is controlling it, but we're all responding as flow. 
that's for me the, the best example of managing transitions and if meditation gets you in touch with yourself then you're able to navigate in a way that's much much more fluid mm -hmm. yep the web of connection vicky says hi vicky hi vicky uh and that really speaks to we really are we really are all connected and so imagine if we could all be in touch with doing what we love and draw and this is ultimately i think what the point we speak about what the point of this evolution is for us to let go of these lower frequency emotions that of fear and all of the the denser energies which is definitely harder harder to do at this current so time. i'm just reading rome's comment yes. doing the best i can with my trifle he said it seems the younger generations have more expectations when they don't go as plans dealing with the disappointment is hard for them and that totally absolutely agree and that's the whole point of managing transitions mm -hmm. there has been no frame of reference that i'm aware of in any meaningful way to be able to go and teach any of us let alone the young generation on how to manage the fear that comes up when plans don't go the way that you mm -hmm. wanted it to and how to actually integrate that and and literally allow that to be just feedback on one's journey they are screaming for that and, and and we're looking for every opportunity to be able to go and present meaningful simple ways of being able to go and learn how to navigate in this way that is like a bat basically so a bat navigates its world by sending out signals and then getting feedback from its environment and it's always pivoting based on the feedback coming back in well, it's the same thing with how we navigate the world our eyes actually send energy out and we actually receive energy from the environment. But we weren't taught that that's what we're doing in terms of navigating. So we actually decide that, no, no, it's very rational. I'm gonna move the furniture from here to here. I'm gonna move from outside the city to the city. I've done a very good job of managing that change and now I should feel happy and content. And guess what? If you haven't done anything to actually be able to go and manage the transition inside, it's a highly unlikely that you can actually feel that content or even if you do feel content it's going to be for 15 minutes or 17 minutes on yeah. average <laughs> it's no doubt that this time and just how we've been brought up like your generation my generation all of it has you know it's it's quite a time and quite a transition that we're we're all going through and ultimately i think it is to bring us to this place of surrender where we come back to more of the essence of our true nature yeah and yeah, this is, the, we signed up for this, apparently. I don't apparently, remember reading the fine says. print. You signed up for this, like, really? You know those legal agreements that you now see when you actually have to go, I agree, to be able to go and get the page? I think that's kind of what it was before we were born. Did I read? Yeah, did we, I, read, I didn't read I, the did, whole, I didn't, whole contract. I just kind of assumed I understood what that was going to be like, and then boom, boom here I come in. Yes, that Rome said, never is it more important to teach the youth how to understand trans transitions yeah. meditation and releasing expectations yeah, totally. yes because we can be i mean i remember i taught a group of young uh like i think there were seven grade seven uh, wi uh women seven girls uh, in high school and they were all i was teaching them yoga and meditation because you know whether it's through their parents or just the pressure that they feel to achieve good marks like to do i was one of those people as well those students and well, yeah, you know, she's busted my ass so hard in high school. If I can go back and say, just chill out a little bit. That yeah. like A plus that you're striving for isn't really going to change your life all that much. But the pressure is so real and they stress themselves out. And so, I mean, we always talk about the importance of educating youth and that meditation and be able to manage our internal energy, be able to like tune in to, to some stillness. So we don't, you know, get, get this idea of like, we are not our thoughts. It's huge. Yeah. And Vicky said, I think a lot of that is self doubt because this generation of youth are rarely allowed to make their own choices. Yes. 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 Also very yeah. valid. Point. Helicopter parents. Yeah. Very, very valid. So I can relate to this as well, where, where I, like, as I explained earlier in the show, like I thought this is what I wanted for my life. Well, was that thinking because it came from within me or was that thinking because of how culture, parents portrayed what, what I should want as a, as a female? And that, that was a hard transition to surrender and let go. And you definitely had moments of feeling crazy. And Vicky saying she missed the fine print too. Yeah. We yeah. chose to come here. 
but this is why we show up for this flow show every week we can uh, just to say like this can really feel like a lonely journey a lot of the time especially if you're you know one of these people that are doing this inner self self reflection journey i remember i can't remember what book maybe it was in michael singer's book um no it was carolyn mice she spoke about how back in the past like in your generation the people that would go on this journey were considered to be like the mavericks or oh, yeah. they were just the musicians and they were considered crazy because they were it was definitely crazy too much of a dangerous yeah. journey because some people you know jump I, off the bridge yeah i still have lots of people at my age actually going like you know love you like crazy tim but like you're nuts yeah yeah it's it's a lot easier to just yeah just go with the the existing flow and then but I, I mean, I also believe your generation is wired different than my generation. Yeah. Everyone behind are wired differently. They have different expectations and they want to actually get to that stage of actually being able to manifest much more quickly. And it, I feel very much the reason I do this is to be able to go and provide the bridge to get, get the tools and the techniques and the mechanics associated with that. Because there are, there's a big, big need for that. Yeah, and you've been tremendous in my big pivot. So well, thanks. thank you. Yes. Well, it's it, yeah. It's why I'm on the planet. Well, and I think that just have the power of having um, different generations yeah. be able to like sit and hash out like different perspectives is has been powerful for us to really yes. create this bridge and be able to see like you know this is the language that I use and this is my understanding about the world and how it works and this was your yeah. understanding because ultimately this is just evolution like change this, talk about change management like evolution is energy is always changing moving in another form and we we've evolved from bacteria and now we're humans who can self-reflect and think like that we're a part of all of this so it really is amazing we really are amazing creatures yes, we are and if we can so sometimes like zoom out and just realize like we're just like floating on a, a rock flying through space and we are made of bacteria and virus, viruses, viruses and, and all kinds of stuff like, yeah, we got COVID and, and COVID 17,000 inside us yes and, and all of it is all of it is evolving and um I was watching this uh interview with Sad, Sad Guru and Deepak Chopra talking about how you know we're so quick to want to eradicate this virus with a vaccine um but that's really just a band-aid solution that the, will just be the next virus. Ultimately, it's about looking at the systemic reason why yeah, viruses inside. are created. And, yeah. and also the fact that usually when a virus occurs, it actually creates something of success for yes. that species. Yes, it moves the evolutionary species. In this case, I think it's actually at a jump point where it's going to move us as a species much, much more quickly forward than we would have moved without this virus and the, the, without mm -hmm. the pandemic, like I, I see the pandemic as a really, really good thing mm -hmm. because it's, it's going to force all the top down legacy thinkers to rethink their strategies around mm -hmm. and strategy structures, process reward, or the whole game is actually in the process of changing And your generation go. Yeah. Hello. Yes. We've been talking about the change in this whole game, you know, minimum viable wage, like all those types of things yeah, for a very to long time. And yeah. Sitting in classrooms for hours upon hours, learning stuff that's not all yeah. that's interesting to me or relevant. And, you know, it's it's all the things that our my generation has been calling for. Yeah. And it's it is happening. And obviously there's going to be a period of time where a little wavy. <laughs> it's going to be a little wavy. But for those of us who have been practicing meditation and can be the anchor for holding pulling space for a really positive outcome, like keeping that mindset that, you know, what's good about this and understanding that this you know, viruses create, um, not to discount anybody who's like had the virus or family or at all, yeah. however it's yeah. disrupted your life as it has for, for many of us, not to belittle it, but to just look at the bigger picture and to hold, to hold that space and be that grounding force. Um, yeah, we're, 15 we're, we're, minutes. we're over our 15, we're over minutes. 15 minutes. So Vicky's saying you two are a bridge between generations. Yes. We yes. That's we're, a, and also gender. That's our gig. The gender and gender generation. And generation. G squared. We're the G squared. <laughs> Elbow bump. Because <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't touch. No, we can't. So. But we're in a bubble. We're in, we're in a bubble. This is true. <laughs> and Vicky is saying, I agree 100%, Tim. 
Well, thank you for joining us today. We'll be back Thursdays every week. We're able to. Yeah, and we're coming up. We're coming along with uh, some webinars and opportunities to be able to go and engage with us. In, yeah, we're going to more... offer the power of the G squared, yeah. the generation gender. Yeah, because I mean, we've had our challenges of communication. That's for oh. sure. And we've tried to actually film as much as possible. You yes. know, something, but we're also looking for is it a family rating as opposed to. Uh, <laughs> Some other rating, so yeah, we had to actually edit out some of the yeah, but we have we, we, we've recorded quite a most of our conversations just to show, like, you know, the challenges that we've come through, and just that any relationship, any business relationship coming together, and what that looks like consciously, and then delivering that in terms. So, our first, our first uh, go to market in the online space, yeah, mechanics of being, so yeah. it's very exciting. So thank you, Sue. Thank you, Rome. Thank you, Vicky. Yes, thanks for all your comments thank you, and participation. Everyone who's been on, we so appreciate your yeah. comments and participation. We really enjoy it. So we'll see you next time. Clover and out. Clover and out.